What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the thermostat and housing on this 2015 Jeep Wrangler. If you need parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. Take this cover off, just grab underneath, lift up, slide it forward. I'm gonna take a straight blade screwdriver and just loosen up these worm clamps. One right here. And then one right here on the throttle body. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, take these two bolts out. Just remove this hose right here. This is gonna be loose. Disconnect it right here. Just slide it out. Right there. And there's a connector right here. We wanna disconnect that connector. Just slide this off. I'm gonna take the cap off the radiator. Then we wanna drain the coolant. I'm gonna raise the vehicle up. We're using a two post lift. If you're doing this at your house, you can use a jack and jack stands. I'm gonna pull this panel off. I'm just gonna use this trim tool. Take all these retainers out. There's two clips on the inside that hold these brackets on that are similar to those ones. You just have to take those out as well. go and just slide it down just like that at this point we're going to get a drain bucket we're going to open up the drain on the bottom of the radiator it's right there so place the drain bucket underneath there and we can loosen this up right here I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers and twist this Starting to move, it's starting to drip. That's good. There we go. Okay, I want to take this hose clamp off. I'm going to use these hose clamp pliers. Uh, we sell these at 1AAuto.com. So line this up just like this and I can squeeze it right here just like that now the clamp is loose now I can try to grab the hose and just twist it back and forth if it's on there really tight you could take a, uh, a pick and go around the hose we'll break the seal some of the coolant's gonna come out of here. I do this. Try to put the bucket underneath it. At this point, I'm just gonna leave that tool attached. It's not in my way. Leave it to the side. Then I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. I'm gonna take these two bolts out. Right here. There's one on the top. There's also one underneath. Once I pull those bolts out, you can just grab the thermostat housing, just slide it out. You want to look at the old housing and see if the seal's there. The seal stayed on the engine side, so grab that, peel it off. Here's the old thermostat housing. Here's the new thermostat and thermostat housing from 1AAuto.com. 
As you can see, the shape is the same, has the same mounting holes. The thermostat itself looks the same. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you can do it yourself. All right, I want to clean up this surface a little bit. I'm just going to take a rag and some brake parts cleaner. If there's any, if there's any uh, debris from the seal, you're going to want to take a razor blade and uh, scrape it off. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. All right, I'm just going to use a little scuff pad with some brake parts cleaner. Be careful with this, you don't want to scratch it up too much. But if you get a little area that's not coming clean too well, or some corrosion, this will work pretty good. Just wipe it off with a rag one more time. Make sure it's nice and clean, looks good. Bob, your uncle. Now I'll take the housing with the bolts. Just line this up. Start the top bolt and the lower bolt. All right, with those bolts snug down a little bit, I will take a torque wrench. I'm going to tighten these to 105 inch pounds. Now I'm going to install the hose, just line it up, push it on, get the hose clamp lined up. If the hose clamp seems weak or it's rusted really bad, you're going to want to replace it. You can replace it with a worm clamp. And I'll just loosen the tool and pull it away. It's good. All right, before we install the new coolant, you want to take and close this drain in the radiator. So get underneath there, close it up. All right, before I put this snorkel on, I want to add coolant, but I can access the bleeder. There's a bleeder actually on this thermostat housing right here. You can take a straight blade screwdriver, just loosen it up. Once you get it a little bit loose, you should be able to do it by hand. You loosen that up. And that's gonna make bleeding the coolant system a little bit easier. The coolant's gonna be able to go down into the radiator and then come through the engine and back up through the bleeder. All right, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use the correct coolant for the vehicle. As I'm pouring this in, you can actually hear the air coming out of the bleeder. We want to add it. Once we start seeing coolant come out of there, then we can close it up. And there we go. See some air bubbles are coming out. That's pretty good. So we'll close it up. Just take the screwdriver and just close it a little bit more. Right about where it was, that's good. All right, now we want to put this snorkel on, connect this temperature, intake temperature sensor, lock it in place. Oh, 
have the two bolts right here. Just get those to line up. As long as these are on properly, then I'll tighten these two down. Just use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And then we'll slide this hose in position. This goes over to the coolant reservoir. I'm gonna tighten up these two worm clamps. Just use a straight blade screwdriver, tighten them up. Good. That yeah, one's good. Take this engine cover, just slide it in position. And push it down. Now we're gonna reinstall this lower shield. Make sure you put the push pins on the back side where these go on in the back. And then these four in the front. All right, with this all back together, I'm gonna add some more coolant to this. Then I'm gonna let the car run. I'm gonna run it for about 10 minutes, constantly monitoring the coolant level, making sure that it's not overflowing, and constantly monitoring the coolant temperature on the vehicle. You, want it, you do not want it to overheat. And once that's all set, I can shut the vehicle down for a while, let it cool down, recheck the level, and then take it for a road test. All right, now I'm just gonna start the car up. So it's always a good idea to put the heat on and put it on hot and just constantly check it and make sure that you actually get heat. If you're not getting heat, there's probably not enough coolant in the system and just make sure you have enough coolant. All right, we also want to check this upper radiator hose. Be careful when you go to touch it. It might be hot. Um, right now it's not too bad. So I know the thermostat hasn't opened yet. If the thermostat opens, it's gonna be hot enough that you can't hold on to it for too long. But right now, it's still not hot. I'm starting to feel it a little bit, but not yet. All right, so the thermostat opened up. This hose is nice and hot. It, you can't touch it for too long. We let it run for about another five minutes. At this point, I'm just gonna shut it off. I'm gonna leave the funnel on, and it's gonna suck the rest of this coolant in, and we'll just top it off a little bit more and you should be good to go. All right, so now our engine's cooled down. The coolant has stabilized. I can put this plug in this funnel. We actually sell this funnel at 1AAuto.com. So take this off. Make sure it's nice and full right there at the radiator. Then I can take the cap, install the cap. And at this point, you're gonna wanna check the overflow tank and make sure the level's up where it needs to be. Ours looks good, so we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.